So, hey, you know, sadly, it's been 12 days since Don Rickles passed. And uh, what a bummer, but man, the guy was, he was something else. <laughs> so, a friend of mine posted on Facebook, you ought to tell your story about Don Rickles. So, I guess it's time. I, I, I think I will. So, I hope you enjoy this. You know, I live in a small town <clears throat> in the foothills of the Sierras. Real small, 10,000 people. But... We have a huge Indian casino there. Actually, there's two within 30 miles of my house. So, you know, we, I move up here. Everybody says, oh, geez, you know, I'm never going to play with anybody. But the fact of the matter is I ended up playing with a lot of people that I probably never would have in L.A. because I'd be last call there as opposed to, you know, one or two here. So I get a call. Hey, Don Rickles is coming to the casino, and he has an orchestra, and he needs a, a, a guy to play guitar, mandolin, and banjo. And I'm like, Don Rickles needs an orchestra, really? <laughs> yeah. So he he has all these. He sings and he does has these musical cues, and he hires an orchestra. I'm thinking a comedian. How you know it's crazy, <clears throat> but it's true, and so. Um, you know, most most comedians they show up, they got they don't even bring a microphone. I mean, they they don't bring anything, and they collect their hundred thousand dollars from the casino and leave. Well, at least Don sh shelled out some money because he's got he's got that old school mentality that when you go out and gig, man, you bring an orchestra. You know, Sinatra did it. Well, I'll do it, and it was a pretty good sized band. So timpani and everything and horns and he didn't have strings, but his musical director was from uh, Vegas, and uh, so anyway, so we get the call, and we come to the rehearsal, and we're, I'm looking at at the music, and um, uh, it's it's got all these cues in it. Um, so you know his opening cue, which was that bullfight thing. I forget how it goes. Anyway. So they play that, and then it, you start looking through the music, and it's got, <clears throat> and I hope I don't offend anybody, but it's got the Jap cue. <laughs> it's like he's got these Japanese stories, you know, Jip calls them the Jap. And it's all this other, the, the Godfather cue. So, um, and then, he's, then he sings a song. He sings, you know, like I'm, uh, one of the tunes was, I'm a nice guy. So... We're doing a rehearsal. Well, first off, I had to bring a banjo, and I forget what the tune was with the banjo, and a mandolin. And I don't have a mandolin, so I borrowed one, and I had to tune it like a guitar. <laughs> and we're outside, and um, it's a big, beautiful stage with all the lights and the rigging and everything. And uh, timpani is over here. So... We start going through the rehearsal and, and playing all the charts and and stuff. Then comes, uh, we're, then we're all done. We're all done with the rehearsal, and the band leader turns and says, "All right, you guys, uh, you got about you know three hour break here. Look at if you are going to get offended by being being made fun of, don't come back. Okay, we don't need you." Don't come back if you're going to get offended, please. Just, uh, but Don is going to make fun of you, big time. <laughs> and so, if it's going to bother you, just don't, just don't even come back. Okay, so we all, we actually all went to my house and we're hanging out. You know, we come back for the gig, and then, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Warmth, Don Rickles, da 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 da. da. And he comes out and, you know, and, it, and it's just, he's just funny from the get-go. He's funny. So <clears throat> one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to be in the first rows, right? Now, he's playing an Indian casino. So who do you think is all in the front rows? The Indians, right? They all have the 
you know, special treatment. That's all the tribe guys and gals. And he was relentless on these people. I mean, it was, it was so funny. You know, I mean, he insults everybody. All right. When he first gets on the stage, number one, here's Larry Honda on sax. He's the first guy. <laughs> and he walks over to him and he says to the musical director, Hey, how did we get a Jap in the band? You know, and he starts doing World War II jokes. It, it's kind of, it was really refreshing, by the way, <laughs> to hear all the politically incorrect jokes that he was making. So anyway, got all the Indians in the front. And uh, one, of, one of them uh, was a pretty good sized fella. And he was sitting there, you know, just real, real big guy. And he walks over to him and he says, hey, tiny. And, and the guy's looking around and he says, hey, you, tiny, tiny. I mean, he's, he's just right here, you know. He says, yeah, yeah. He says, hey, tiny, how much do you weigh? And he says, 250. He says, 250, my ass, you got 250 in each butt cheek, buddy. I, you know, so anyway, everybody laughs. But, you know, as Don dokes through his act, he is actually always saying, I love people. I love people. We're all we're all the same. We're all the same, you know, and and uh, that's that's so true. So anyway, he he was just making fun of uh, you know the another guy in the band, uh, a Mexican guy. He says, you know, I love the Mexicans. Boy, they taught us how to sleep on the job and all this stuff. And he just goes on and on. And the band is all cracking up. All right, so he even made fun. You know, in the front row, there's a lot of guys in wheelchairs. There was even a paraplegic guy. And I swear to God, he's making fun of this guy, and the guy is loving it. He's laughing his butt off, and everybody else is. And, you know, you can just tell that he loves people. So anyway, it, it was that Don loves people. Jeez, it was crazy. I've never, you know, just being in so close to it all happening to you, you know, and being behind him and seeing what he's doing, it's crazy. So anyway, okay, so we go through the act. Now, you know, the musical con uh, director says, okay, here's the cues coming up, pull out, you know, next in line is the Godfather. So I think, oh, geez, I, well, I got to get the mandolin. Get the mandolin. I turn around and a bird had crapped all down the, the mandolin. And I was just white. It's like, ah, oh, sick. And I pick up the mandolin, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Trying to wipe it off and stuff. Luckily, Don didn't see that. So uh, he ended up not doing that cue, and I was relieved. And by the way, the, the timpani guy said, man, there was, you know, pigeon poop all over the timpani. That's one of the bad things about playing outside. So now um, <clears throat> Don goes through his act and everybody's just cracking up. And the Indian jokes, again, over and over and over. <laughs> you know, you guys are circling the hotel with your powwow, you know, and keep me up at night and all this stuff. I just want to come up here and take $100,000 and get home, you know. And Anyway, he's just funny. So towards the end of it, this is how much class the guys got. I mean, I've played be with a lot of different guys, and, and they all love the band, and they acknowledge him. But here's Don Rickles, who's really not a musician. He's, you know, a comedian, but he sings a little bit. But he went through everybody's name in the band. Larry Honda, I want to thank you. And then he goes into a joke. You know, and that he's everybody. He made fun of everybody in the bandstand. Gets around to me. And I live on a dirt road. I live, you know, there's dirt. And trying to get out of your house with a tuxedo. You know, I got dirty shoes, man. My shoes are all dusty. My God. He went on about my shoes. My shoes. You, you ever heard of shoe shine? Have you ever heard of, you know, don't you know, what's wrong with you guys? I forget exactly what he was saying. But he was pretty funny about that whole thing about my shoes I don't know how you could see them so good but anyway because my, my shoes were dusty now since then 
I bought one of those automatic, you know, duster things that spins and dusts your shoes. So I always try to have nice shoes. All right, so it was really funny. And, uh, you know, he, he just is a great guy. He was just a great guy. So I play, get a call again a couple of years later. Hey, Don's going to play at this other casino. He wants an orchestra. I'm like, okay. I tell you, if anybody nowadays, any comedian nowadays, <laughs> would come and they need some musical cues or they're going to sing, they would bring an iPad with a track, right? Don brings an orchestra. It's crazy. So <clears throat> the whole night, he's, there's not one Indian joke. And the place, now this is another Indian casino, place is full of the tribal members. Not one Indian joke. Not one Indian joke. And I'm like, gee, this, wow, this is really weird. So we get all, almost to the end of the show. I mean, yeah, he, does a, he does a good hour, maybe hour and a half. And this is only a few years ago. The guy was, you know, 85 or something. So <laughs> he says, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I was told, you know, not to make fun of the Indians here. And, you know, I, you know, I respect your wishes. And, and so I, if you noticed, I haven't made any jokes about the Indians. But, you know, if I was going to make a joke, here's something that I might say. <laughs> and he went boom, 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 boom with all these <laughs> Indian jokes. And everybody's cracking up. And uh, I, actually, I, I had talked to the, the guy who had booked him before the gig started. And, they, and, and he said, yeah, Don was told, uh, yeah, you can't. Or actually, I think it was after that they didn't want any Indian jokes. Well, they got them anyways. So anyway, I just wanted to give... That was my cue. I just wanted to, to do a little insight. Boy, what a class act. What a classy guy. And everybody loved him. When you left that show, you felt good about yourself and about everybody around you. He was that kind of guy, you know? It wasn't, uh, it's like uh, you weren't depressed. Sometimes when I, I've seen George, Car George Carlin once, which I love, but man, when I got out of that show, I was depressed. But uh, Don just made everybody feel warm and happy, and it was really a pleasure and an honor to, to do that gig. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that was entertaining and uh, for you. Anyway, he'll be missed. I'll talk to you later.